Uh, very good morning. Uh, thanks for tuning in this morning at 8 for the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you and these are our top stories. Army retaliating strongly after captain and three jawans were martyred in heavy Pakistani shelling in Punch and Rajori in Jammu and Kashmir. Four civilians also injured. Schools within five kilometer radius of line of control closed for the next three days. Motion of thanks to President's address is scheduled in Parliament. Amit Shah to initiate the debate in Rajya Sabha. President Ramnath Kovind had addressed the joint sitting of both houses on 29th of January. Prime Minister Narendra Modi accuses Congress government in Karnataka of not making proper use of central assistance on a concluding day of BJP's Parivartan Yatra in Bengaluru says India government has given nearly three times more funds to the state as compared to UPA. In neighboring Andhra Pradesh, ruling TDP clarifies alliance with the BJP intact for now. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu stresses on the need to promote a greater understanding and appreciation of cultural diversity around the world. Inaugurating the first international Kala Mela in Delhi says culture is an indicator of quality of life. India defeats uh, South Africa in the second one-day international at Centurion. Yuzvendra Chahil's uh, five-wicket haul bundles out the uh, host in uh, 33 overs. India win by nine wickets with over 29 overs to spare. Women's team to take on South Africa in the three-match series for direct entry into the 2021 World Cup tournament. Our top focus in Jammu and Kashmir, an army captain and three jawans were martyred and at least four people were injured as Pakistani forces resorted to heavy mortar shelling along the line of control in Punch and Rajori districts on Sunday. According to defence sources, Pakistani forces started unprovoked firing and shelling, targeting some Indian positions and civilian areas in Shahpur sector on Sunday forenoon. Later, the shelling by Pakistani army was also extended to Manjakot and North Shera sectors of adjoining Rajori districts. Army troops guarding the borderline retaliated the firing effectively. And until uh, reports uh, came uh, in last, uh, intermittent firing from both sides is on. Following the Pakistani shelling, schools located within 5 kilometers uh, radius from the line of control have been closed for the next three days. Frequently, we have been in the past few days and we have been in the past few days, but we have been in the past few days. जिसमें सभी सेक्टर्स जिसमें सुंदरबनी नौशहरा मंजाकोट डोंगी एरिया वहां पे वायलेशन हुई है जिसमें स्मॉल आर्म्स थे शुरू में और उसके बाद हैवी शेलिंग भी और उसके चलते चार आर्मी के जो ऑफिसर्स हैं एक ऑफिसर और तीन जवान उनका लॉस हुआ है एक बीएसएफ के सब इंस्पेक्टर और काफी ज्यादा शेलिंग हुई है इंटीरियर एरियाज भी इफेक्टेड हैं और इसके चलते हमें शायद माइग्रेशन भी लोगों की वहां से इफेक्ट करनी पड़ेगी इवेक्ट करके उनको उसकी जरूरत हम फील कर रहे इसके अलावा सभी प्रिकॉशन लिए गए हैं वहां पे मेडिकल इमरजेंसीज के लिए और बाकी जो भी लोगों को इवेक्ट करने की जरूरत है और 84 जो स्कूल्स हैं इस इलाके में वो आने वाले 3 दिन के लिए बंद रहेंगे हम सिचुएशन को क्लोजली मॉनिटर कर रहे हैं इसके बाद जो भी प्रिकॉशन लेने की जरूरत है या जो भी स्टेप्स लेने की जरूरत है इमरजेंसी रिस्पांस के लिए वो हम लेंगे and news from Parliament, uh, where the motion of thanks on the President's address is slated to be introduced in both houses of our Parliament today. In the Rajya Sabha, Amit Shah will initiate the motion of thanks and uh, Vinay P. Shahastra Buddha will second it. Now, this will be Amit Shah's uh, debut speech in the Upper House. The Upper House will discuss the motion of thanks over uh, today as well as uh, Tuesday. In the Lok Sabha also, the motion of thanks to the President's address is slated in the list of business. Rakesh Singh is uh, scheduled to move the motion and Prahlad Venkatesh is slated to second it. The budget session of Parliament began on 29th of January with the President's address to the joint sitting of Parliament. He spoke on various government schemes in his address. The President had said that the upliftment of farmers and their income is the prime objective of the government. 
He also spoke about the Clean India Mission. He also highlighted the benefits of various government policies, saying not only have they helped in securing the rights of the poor, but has also prompted digital transactions, enabling transparency and cutting corruption. News from the south of the country, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has emphasized that recent general budget uh, serves farmers and favors the middle class. Now, speaking at a public rally in Bengaluru on Sunday, he stressed that uh, announcements in the budget will benefit the farmers. Highlighting the work culture of a BJP based on Sapka Saath, Sapka Vikas, that also believes in improving ease of doing business, the Prime Minister charged that the Congress government in Karnataka is at the exit gate. Now, listing out the failure of the Karnataka state government in utilizing central grants properly, he said that despite the India government released nearly three times more central funds than the UPA, the state has failed to utilize it for the development projects. The Prime Minister was addressing the concluding day of the 85-day-long Parivartan Yatra. और मैं देख रहा हूं कर्नाटक ने ठान लिया है कि कर्नाटक को कांग्रेस मुक्त करके ही रहेंगे मैं कांग्रेस की सरकार थी तब कर्नाटक को 73000 करोड़ रुपए मिले मिलते थे लेकिन जब केंद्र में भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार बनने के बाद कर्नाटक को दो लाख करोड़ रुपये से ज्यादा की राशि मिलना तय हुआ यानी करीब करीब 180 परसेंट की वृद्धि हुई बढ़ोतरी हुई and to news uh, from Nagaland now, BJP has released its uh, list of 20 candidates for the forthcoming uh, Nagaland Assembly elections. The list are the names of candidates for 10 districts and state capital Kohima and uh, Perrin districts have been left out and it does not feature the name of state party chief uh, as well. BJP has become the first political party to release its candidates uh, list for the polls while the regional parties, tribal groups and civil society organizations in the state are demanding a solution to the Naga political issue before the election. Meanwhile, uh, some of the state level party leaders have written to party chief Amit Shah expressing their resentment against the pre-poll alliance with the newly floated uh, Nationalistic Democratic uh, People's Party or the NDPB. Now, NDPB is led by former Chief Minister Nifunio Rio. The 60-member Nagaland Assembly goes to polls on the 27th of this month. And several state assemblies will begin their budget session from today. Rajasthan budget session will commence with Governor Kalyan Singh's address. Chief Minister Vasundhara Raje, who also holds the finance portfolio, will present the state's budget on 12th of February. Session is likely to be stormy with the opposition Congress trying to corner the Vasundhara Raje government on several issues after party's impressive bipolar victories on two Lok Sabha and one state assembly seats in Rajasthan. While Congress wrestled uh, Alwar as well as uh, Ajmer Lok Sabha and Mandalgarh assembly seats from the BJP by decent margins. And the 16th and the last uh, session of the 14th Karnataka Assembly will also begin with a tradition address to the joint session of the state legislature by the Governor Vajubhai Wala. The 13-day session will see Chief Minister Siddharamaya present the state budget on 16th of February. The session would tentatively come to an end on 28th of February as the state would be poll-bound within the next three months. Also, budget session of the Chhattisgarh Assembly will commence from today. The state budget for the fiscal 2018-19 would be presented on 10th of February by Chief Minister Raman Singh, who also holds the finance portfolio. And the 15th session of the 4th Chhattisgarh Assembly will culminate on 28th of February and it will have 17 sittings.
And in breakfast news, time for a very short break. We'll be right back. Regional power to an assertive global leader. Image building is a very complex exercise. You can gain on some fronts, but you can lose on other fronts. India is changing, and there will have to be give and take. The old days of colonialism are over. We have a strategic partnership agreement that includes areas of cooperation in all fields, including security and defense. India is taking confident strides on the global stage. Pakistan is now Terroristan. New friendships, stronger ties. Join me, Tracy Shilshi, every Monday at 10 p.m. as I speak to India's foreign policy elite. Catch all the action on India's world only on Rajya Sabha TV. Singhal, the first differently abled woman to top the civil services examination in 2014. Born on August 31st, 1983, Ira completed her BE from NSIT University of Delhi. Singhal is a testament to the fact that stubbornly pursuing our passions is the only way to the path of greatness. She's the person who did not let a mere disability get in the way of her absolute genius. She has been honoured with the First Lady Award by the President of India in 2018. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentary. Majestic forecourt of Rashtrapati Bhavan, and you'll come across the Jaipur Column. A gift to the Viceroy from Savai Madhu Singh, the Maharaja of Jaipur, to commemorate the creation of the new capital. The 145 meter high column is crowned with six pointed crystal stars on a bronze lotus, and inside the stone shaft runs a steel tube which weighs a little more than five tons. The base of the column has text conceived by Lord Irwin and Sir Edwin Lutyens inscribed on it. सिंह शेखावत देश के 11वें उपराष्ट्रपति तेईस अक्टूबर 1923 को सीकर राजस्थान में जन्म पिता के देहांत के बाद पढ़ाई छोड़नी पड़ी और पुलिस में नौकरी की उन्नीस में सार्वजनिक जीवन की शुरुआत भारतीय जनसंघ के संस्थापकों में से एक 
जनता पार्टी और भारतीय जनता पार्टी की स्थापना में सक्रिय भूमिका उन्नीस से उन्नीस राजस्थान विधानसभा के सदस्य उन्नीस में राज्यसभा के सदस्य चुने गए तीन बार राजस्थान के मुख्यमंत्री 19 अगस्त 2002 को देश के उपराष्ट्रपति 20 नवंबर 2002 को राज्यसभा के सभापति 15 मई 2010 को जयपुर में देहांत Welcome back after the break. President Ramnath Kovind will open the Udyanotsav of Rashtrapati Bhavan today. The Mughal Gardens will remain open for the public from the 6th of this month to 9th of March between 9.30 a.m. to 4.00 p.m. General public will also be able to visit the spiritual garden, herbal garden, bonsai garden and musical garden. The special feature of this year's Udyanotsav is bulbs flowering plants. About 10,000 programmed tulip bulbs in eight varieties of different colors were imported from the Netherlands and have been planted in the Mughal Gardens. The several beds of roses, including both new and heritage varieties, margined with the dwarf trimmed hedge as well as numerous exotic plants, including tulips and other bulbous flowering plants, are the main attraction of the garden. And Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has said uh, that uh, news channels and papers must dedicate some space for crucial issues like health, education and social responsibility. He was addressing a gathering after inaugurating a cancer and diabetes health camp in Swarna Bharat Trust in Vijaywara on its second anniversary. The Vice President said that every citizen of, of the country must contribute for the welfare of the nation, adding that the country will prosper when women, youth and farmers are given their due. He said uh, that diseases like cancer require early detection for better treatment and that lifestyle changes, environmental changes are the main reasons of these health problems. He said that we must have adequate facilities for identifying health problems to provide medicines on time. The Vice President also asked everyone to understand the meaning of life and the purpose of our life. He asked people to realize the potential of the country's heritage and culture. Spirituality and family systems are our greatest strengths. This system is a model for the whole world, he added. He further said that corruption has become a dreaded concern of the society and is spreading like a cancer, spoiling nation's development. Honest practices must come into the system, he emphasized. And the first international Kala Mela began in New Delhi at Indira Gandhi National Arts Centre. The festival was inaugurated by Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu. He congratulated the Lalit Kala Academy for fostering cultural contacts within the country and also with other countries through art exhibitions and such art festivals. <laughs> the Lalit Kala Academy, in partnership with Indira Gandhi National Centre, in the Ministry of Culture is hosting the first ever international Kala Mela. The festival was inaugurated by Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu. More than 800 artists from across the world are participating in the festival. While addressing the gathering, the Vice President said that culture is like the heartbeat of a civilization and it is an expression of its world view and also a symbol of its value system. The Vice President welcomed the delegates from various countries and said that India is one of the oldest civilizations with an unmatched richness in culture and heritage which are manifested in different art forms. festival 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 मगर उसमें आठ प्रदेशों से लोग महाराष्ट्र से वरिष्ठा से झारखंड से छत्तीसगढ़ से तेलंगाना से आंध्र प्रदेश से सभी इलाका से जो आदिवासी मूल निवासी है जिसको हम लोग अंग्रेजी भाषा में ट्राइबल कहते उन लोगों का एक जातरा एक मेला उनके उत्सव था सरकार का कहना है एक करोड़ पचास लाख लोग आया मैं हेलीकॉप्टर से देखा 
तो इतना सुंदर दृश्य एक नया शहर वहां निर्माण हो गया ऐसा मुझे लगा है ऊपर ऊपर से देखने से With a total of 325 exhibition stalls, the festival has more than 800 participants from across the globe. It is open till February 17th. Art, sculpture, art installations, film festival, and workshops are some of the highlights of this art festival. कुछ विजुअल आर्ट फिल्म फेस्टिवल हम कर रहे हैं, कुछ वर्कशॉप्स कर रहे हैं, पेपर मैशे, पटक चित्रा, वैसा कुछ वर्कशॉप्स भी है, और इसका और एक स्पेशलिटी है कि वायलिन मेकिंग का एक वर्कशॉप भी हम कर रहे हैं, ऐसे बहुत कोलैटरल इवेंट्स इसके साथ है। बड़ा एक प्लेटफॉर्म है जिसमें अलग अलग तरह के आर्टिस्ट जो हैं अलग अलग एनवायरनमेंट अलग अलग स्टेट से आए हुए लोग हैं तो बहुत अच्छा प्लेटफॉर्म है एक इंटरेक्शन जो है होगा सब आर्टिस्ट का एक दूसरे का काम देखेंगे द इनोग्रल सेरेमनी कल्मिनेटेड विद अ फोक डांस बाय अ डांस ट्रूप फ्रॉम श्रीलंका Harish Gangani's Kathak recital Sargam vowed the audience. And young players under the age of uh, 17 years are participating in various disciplines at a Kelo India event in the national capital. Both the players as well as coaches are praising the event. The event, remember, was inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi with the aim to revive sports culture in India at the grassroots levels by building a strong framework for all play sports played in the country. Young players under the age group of 17 are participating in various disciplines at Kelo India being held in Delhi since 31st of January. The athletes playing at Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium are all praised for the facilities. I was in the first stadium, but बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है यहाँ पे आकर बहुत खुश लग रहे हैं और रहने की जगह भी बहुत अच्छा है खाने भी बहुत अच्छा है बहुत यहाँ पे आकर बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है केलो इंडिया इस यूजफुल फॉर मेनी स्टूडेंट्स इफ यू विन फर्स्ट प्राइस प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी विल गिव रुपीस ट्वेल्व लैक्स एंड सेकेंड प्लेस एट लैक्स एंड थर्ड प्लेस फाइव लैक्स इट इज़ वेरी यूजफुल फॉर ऑल द चिल्ड्रन दिस केलो इंडिया इज़ वेरी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अदर नेशनल गेम्स इट्स वेरी वेरी बेनिफिशियल फॉर मोर बैकवर्ड चिल्ड्रन द प्राइस विच दे गिव लाइक द फर्स्ट प्राइज ट्वेल्व लैक्स एट लैक्स एंड फाइव लैक्स विल बी वेरी मोर वेरी मोर बेनिफिशियल फॉर द एजुकेशनल फैसिलिटीज द एम ऑफ द इवेंट इज टू आइडेंटिफाई थाउजेंड टैलेंटेड एथलीट्स हु विल गेट अ स्कॉलरशिप ऑफ फाइव लाख रुपीज पर एनम फॉर एट ईयर्स टू ट्रेन 199 golds, 199 silver and 275 bronze medals are at stake across various disciplines in the games that will conclude on 8th of February. The disciplines include archery, badminton, swimming, shooting, volleyball, weightlifting, wrestling, cocoa, judo, kabaddi, gymnastics, hockey, football and boxing. Around 3,700 players are taking part in the event. खेलो इंडिया में आकर उनको लगता है जो हमारा जितना हमी मने टेक्निक है अच्छा सीख सकते हैं हम आगे बढ़ने का कुछ स्कोप मिल सकता है। Five years up to scholarship for all the prize winners. So this is very much in school childrens. We are very proud to participate in this खेलो इंडिया. We have to thank our heartfelt thanks to our Prime Minister Modi. सबसे बड़ी बात ये है कि आफ्टर दिस इवेंट जो हमारे प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने एक स्कीम लॉन्च की है जैसे कि फाइव लैक्स रुपीस हर एक टॉप जो टॉप मोस्ट होंगे उनको मिलेगी टॉप मोस्ट तो इससे स्पोर्ट्स को आई थिंक कि काफी आने वाले वक्त में बढ़ावा मिलेगा अगर ये प्रॉपरली ये चीज एक्सेक्यूट होती है तो the event was inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi with the aim to revive sports culture in India at the grassroots level by building a strong framework for all sports played in the country. In line with the Prime Minister's vision to make India a great sporting nation, the Centre in Union Budget 2018-19 proposed a huge allocation of 520 crore rupees for Kelo India project. This is the real spirit behind this 
Khelo India initiative and the mission is to develop overall sports culture in the country and the target is to win medals in the upcoming Olympic Games. In Delhi with Kamran Kamaljeet, this is Panchanan Mishra for Rajya Sabha TV. On to cricket now, and India beat uh, South Africa by nine wickets in the second one-day international match at uh, Centurion. India achieved the target of 119 runs with the 29.3 overs to spare. South Africa were bundled out for a score of 118. Shikhar Dhawan's 51 and captain Virat Kohli's 46 runs helped the visitors to win the second ODI in the 20th over. With this win, India have won the first two of the six ODIs to be played in South Africa. Yuzbendu Chahal was the pick of the bowlers for India with the figures of five wickets for 22, while Kuldeep Yadav sir, took uh, three wickets for 20 runs. India will play their third ODI against South Africa on 7th of February at Cape Town. An Indian women's uh, cricket team will take on South Africa in the three-match series starting today at uh, South Africa's Kimberley. The three-match series so, will give both teams a chance to directly qualify for the 2021 ICC Women's World Cup. Kimberley will be the venue of the ODIs on 7th of February as well, while the series will finish in Port Chef's room on 10th of February. News from the world of badminton and ace player PV Sindhu lost the women's singles final to US's uh, Zhang Biwen at the Indian Open Badminton Series in New Delhi. The Rio Olympic silver medalist lost to the fifth seed Chinese-American 18-21, 21-11-2022. Sindhu entered the final, defeating the third place uh, Thai Ratchanok Intanon in straight games in the semi-finals on Saturday. And that's it from me and my team in this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching.